Hello, everybody. Welcome to Ms. Maguar video lectures. And uh, today we are covering uh, the endocrine and lymphatic system, and it's going to be introduction. Um, right, so let's go ahead and begin. Um, so uh, on the first slide, we actually can see another system that is nervous system. Why would it be included in the PowerPoint that talking about endocrine? Um, because both nervous and endocrine system are system of control and communication. So nervous system is fast. Uh, it's a very rapid, fast, and it short-lived response, right? Um, nervous system uh, use uh, chemical and electrical signals. So pretty much it controls your other body system, like your um, digestive system, like your respiratory system, cardiovascular system, um, right? So it's control set modifying the activities by chemical and electrical signals. Now, chemical signals include neurotransmitters and response is uh, fast. Uh, distance traveled by those neurotransmitters are short um, and it's control your internal uh, environment and allow you to communicate with the external environment. Endocrine system also controls your respiratory rate and your excretion and your heartbeat, but it controls it by hormones. So the signaling mechanism are chemicals, uh, they are endocrine hormones. Distance travel can be long or short, response time can be fast or slow, and it's controlled your internal environment. Um, now, endocrine system composed of uh, different organs, and we know organs are made of tissues, tissues are made of cells, and here's the major endocrine glands. They secrete hormones into surrounding fluids, and the hormones pretty much uh, circulating your entire body, and uh, those organs that have receptors for those specific hormones, they will respond. So major endocrine gland include pituitary, uh, that's uh, in your cranial cavity, pineal, also in the cranial cavity, posterior to pituitary gland, uh, thyroid, um, shown over here in the cervical region, parathyroid, uh, those are you know, glands uh, on the posterior side of the thyroid gland, uh, adrenal um, on a superior part of the kidneys, um, right? And uh, that's all on our list, pituitary, thyroid, parathyroid, adrenal, and pineal. But you can see on this diagram, like pancreas uh, is part of your endocrine system. It's also part of the digestive system. Uh, ovaries, testes, part of endocrine system, and also re a reproductive system. Thymus, part of endocrine system, and also your immune system or lymphatic system. So pretty much, you know, almost every organ in your body has the ability to secrete some um, endocrine uh, hormones that um, messengers that in some shape or form control the activity of uh, you as an organism and keep you, keep your homeostasis. Okay, so um, actually I'm gonna, uh, move to the next slide that show you the first gland that we're gonna discuss very briefly, and it's a pituitary gland. Now, pituitary gland is made of anterior and posterior uh, lobes. Now, posterior lobe, um, okay, so uh, let's see over here. Um, yeah, so it show you, so on this, we have another diagram over here, shows anterior lobe, and this one, concentrated more on the posterior lobe. Now, posterior lobe is a part of the nervous tissue. Um, it's um, actually um, uh, kind of like a con continuation of your uh, hypothalamus. Um, so you can see neurons uh, projecting their axons from the hypothalamus uh, toward the posterior lobe. 
And this is where hormones are released, uh, but the hormones are synthesized are actually by hypothalamus. So hypothalamus synthesizes the hormones, and we have uh, two uh, uh, major hormones over here. Um, that is um, oxytocin and ADH, antidiuretic hormones. So hypothalamic neurons, they release it, uh, release those hormones. Those hormones move um, along these axons and uh, released from posterior pituitary into uh, blood, bloodstream, right? Oxytocin and ADH now released into the blood and um, you know, then it's circulating uh, within your body. Um, so this is called neurohypothesis. So the posterior pituitary called neurohypothesis. Now anterior pituitary is a true gland, right? It's made of um, epithelial, glandular epithelial tissue and uh, the hormones are synthesized by the cells within this anterior pituitary uh, lobe. And they are released into uh, bloodstream. And here's the major hormones that release TSH, FSH, LH, ACTH, GH, PRL. So it's a, a thyroid stimulating hormone. So this hormone gonna stimulate your thyroid gland. Follicle stimulating hormone, gonna stimulate ovaries and testes. Luteinizing hormone, also gonna stimulate um, ovaries and testes. Adrenocorticotropic hormone, gonna stimulate your adrenal gland. Growth hormone and prolactin. Um, growth hormone, um, if we go back now and prolactin, we can go over here. Growth hormone promotes body tissue growth and prolactin promotes milk production. Right? So that's from anterior pituitary lobe. Um, so if you notice over here, we are not going into detail uh, exactly what those hormones do, how they affect your body. For us, um, because it's really very brief introduction, uh, let's just remember that there is pituitary gland that is part of endocrine system. It's located, if you look over here, actually inside your cranial cavity. It's inferior to hypothalamus. It's made of two lobes, and posterior lobe is nervous tissue, anterior lobe is uh, epithelial tissue. So that's our endocrine gland. Um, uh, that's called um, adrena. Uh, I'm sorry. Um, so this is neurohypothesis, and this one is uh, uh, okay. Um, give me give me a second. Um, okay, so what I was saying, the uh, we have posterior lobe that is neurohypothesis and adenohypothesis is anterior lobe. Okay, so now what happened over here? I'm sorry. Um, for some reason now I cannot move it. <laughs> Um, all right, let me see. Yeah, okay, now it's working. Um, okay, so the next um, uh, gland that we're discussing briefly is a thyroid gland. Um, so I like this diagram because sh I show you relationship of the thyroid gland to, the, to your larynx and to the uh, arch of the aorta. So you can see that's your trachea in the middle, arch of aorta, and here's your larynx, uh, specifically this cartilage is thyroid cartilage. Um, and you have a right in between, right? Inferior to thyroid cartridge and superior uh, to the aorta, also anterior and lateral to the trachea, your thyroid gland that is made of two lobes and isthmus um, is the area that connects these two lobes together. Uh, it's a major metabolic um, um, a major metabolic hormone of the thyroid gland is the thyroid hormone. 
it increases metabolic rate and heat production. Um, and another hormone that's secreted by the thyroid gland is calcitonin. Um, this one stimulates calcium uptake and incorporation it into bone matrix. So what calcitonin does, it uh, decreases your uh, blood calcium levels. So it's take calcium from, your, from the plasma of your blood and incorporate it into your bones. Okay. So here's some homeostatic imbalances of thyroid hormone hyposecretion or hypersecretion. Hyposecretion in adults caused uh, maxedema, uh, goiter, if you also have lack of iodine. Um, so maxedema is over here and you have extra accumulation of extra fluid, especially uh, in a uh, this periorbital area. Uh, in the infants, um, hyposecretion of uh, thyroid hormone is really um, uh, devastating. It, it's caused a um, condition called cretinism. So it's shown on the second picture. So it impairs uh, mental development and cognitive development of the child. Uh, hypersecretion causes Graves' disease uh, on the picture number three. Um, this is this protuberance of the eyeballs and this patient. Right, so um, is a low secretion or uh, a high secretion of uh, thyroid hormone can, can have effect on a patient, on a person life. Now, parathyroid hormone, um, if you look on the posterior side of the thyroid, you will see the parathyroid glands. So we have like four, sometimes six parathyroid glands. It stimulates osteoclast to digest bone matrix, uh, enhances a reabsorption of calcium and secretion of phosphate by the kidney, promotes activation of vitamin D uh, by the kidney and increases absorption of calcium by intestinal mucosa. So what parathyroid gland does, its major job is to regulate calcium balance, a calcium homeostasis. And it's really, uh, it increases the calcium level in your bloodstream. Um, it, it does it by removing calcium from your bone, right? That's what it says, osteoclast. What osteoclasts do, they digest your bone. And when they digest your bone, they release calcium into blood or reabsorption of calcium, what that means in your kidneys, um, first you, um, you filter this calcium out, right? You, um, you, you secrete it to those tubules and you kind of are ready to get rid of calcium. But uh, if P, uh, PTH is present, then you reabsorb calcium back to your bloodstream. So you're not removing much calcium with your urine. And also what it does, it's increase absorption calcium from your food in your small intestine. So very important gland in regulation of calcium homeostasis. Adrenal gland, uh, top of kidneys held in place with connective tissue. And adrenal glands are similar in this respect um, to the pituitary gland because it's also gland that is made of nervous tissue and a glandular epithelium. Um, so, um, and if you look um, on uh, this diagram here, you can see that adrenal gland is made of a cortex and the medulla. Uh, now, medulla is nervous tissue, and it secretes epinephrine and norepinephrine. Um, when the cortex has several layers, we call them different zones, uh, um, a zona glomerulosa, a zona fasciculata, zona reticularis, and they secrete um, uh, steroid hormones, like all the zones. I think it will be here. So, um, so it show here that uh, the cortex itself secrete mineral corticoids, glucocorticoids, and um, androgens. 
Now, mineralocorticoids, one of the most um, you know, important is aldosterone, and it's regulate um, the uh, sodium concentration in your blood. Glucocorticoids regulate glucose metabolism. Um, and androgens um, uh, supplement, um, um, sub, uh, th those are sex hormones. Androgens are sex hormones that are supplement those producing gonads, converted to testosterone or estrogen in tissues. Um, uh, now, in uh, glucocorticoids, uh, the uh, most um, well-known hormone is cortisol. Uh, and this one that inhibit tissue building, stimulates breakdown of stored nutrients. So it's, a, um, a, 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 you know, regulates your um, sugar metabolism in your blood, right? Um, uh, and medulla, we already mentioned the medulla secretes uh, epinephrine and norepinephrine and uh, produces hormones in the response of short-term stress. So what do we want to uh, highlight about adrenal glands? Uh, we want to highlight that adrenal gland is like two glands put together. Um, the cortex is um, epithelial tissue and medulla is nervous tissue. Cortex secretes hormones that regulate your sodium um, level in your blood, a glucose level in the blood, and also produce um, adrenogens or so sex hormones, a little bit of sex hormones in addition to ovaries or and testes, and medulla produce epinephrine and norepinephrine as a response to a stressful situation in your life. Right? Okay. Um, so here's some uh, homeostatic imbalances of glucocorticoids. Um, high per secretion cause a cushion, uh, cushioning syndrome. Um, and um, so this picture C, that's a, a patient uh, that was, uh, so that, that's a patient phase before the patient had this cushioning syndrome. Uh, you, you might think here that oh, she just gained some weight, but um, that's not the case. Actually, what happening, we have some uh, buildup uh, fat deposit in a specific parts of the um, face, like uh, in this zygomatic um, area on the cheekbones. It also depresses cartilage and bone formation, um, inhibits inflammation, uh, depresses the immune system, promotes changes in cardiovascular, neural, and gastrointestinal function hyper secretion of glucocorticoids and specifically over here uh, of the cor cortisol. So uh, sometimes uh, patients uh, are put on a medication that um, uh, has a cortisol. Um, so for example, if somebody has uh, some um, a kidney transplant, or some autoimmune disease, just to depress your immune system, so prevent your immune system from attacking um, your own organs or donor organs, um, doctor prescribe uh, cortisol. And what cortisol does, yeah, it decreases inflammation, it depresses your immune system, but it can cause side effects such as this cushioning syndrome when the uh, patient has this um, you know round round face deposition of the fat in a uh, cheek area, right? So that's that might be a side effect of the anti-inflammatory drugs and um, immunodepressants such as cortisol. Hypo secretion cause Edison disease uh, also involves deficiency in in mineralocorticoids. So. Edison disease, it both uh, hypersecretion of glucocorticoid and mineralocorticoid. So it decreases in glucose and sodium levels, cause weight loss, severe dehydration, um, hypertension, so low blood uh, sugar. And it's also kind of like affects your face. So you have like, um, you can see on this patient over here, like darker spots through your face. And also it's been said that um, the 
president, um, right, um, this guy over here also had Edison do this. Mm, okay. Uh, next um, gland is pancreas. So here also the location of pink, you can see location of pink pancreas. Um, the stomach are actually removed from this picture, but you would have stomach here. And this is the first part of the small intestine, duodenum, and that's a spleen. So that's where the pancreas is. So it has a head and body and tail of the pancreas. It's a triangular gland behind the stomach, has both exocrine and endocrine cells. Um, exocrine cells um, secrete pancreatic juices, for, and those are digestive enzymes, and uh, endocrine um, glands secrete, um, and, uh, endocrine part of pancreas secrete endocrine hormones. Um, so um, um, over here, you can see um, this, um, structure source over here called pancreatic islets and pancreatic islets secrete insulin and glucagon. Um, uh, so acinar cells that I'll go back, sorry. Uh, so those are acinar cells, this one and this, not those little blue ones shown over here. So acinar cells, this is a part of exocrine um, system that produce enzyme rich juice for digestion and pancreatic islets the old name is islets of Langerhams, contain endocrine cells, alpha cells and beta cells. Now beta cells produce insulin and alpha cells produce glucagon. Now what insulin does, everybody knows, it reduces glucose level in your blood and glucagon increases uh, glucose level in, in blood. All right, and um, we all familiar, familiar with diabetes mellitus. Um, and this is where you, uh, easy, your body easily does not produce any insulin, then it will be type one diabetes, or your body might produce insulin, but your cells might not respond to insulin properly. And this will be a case of type two diabetes. Okay, so that's very quick introduction to the endocrine system, right? So, so here again, several glands that we briefly, briefly covered. Next part is the lymphatic system. Um, so, so lymphatic system is composed of um, lymphatic organs, uh, lymphatic vessels, um, and major lymphatic organs are lymph nodes. We have about 500, 600 lymph nodes. Um, we have um, the whole network of lymphatic vessels. And inside those vessels, we have fluid we call lymph. Uh, so lymphatic function is to drain body fluids, transport of immune system cells, like your white blood cells, and its staging area for immune response. Um, so lymphatic system is a network for your immune system. Now in anatomy, we mostly concentrate on lymphatic system. In physiology, we mostly talk about immune system, but it's also cover um, you know, lymphatic because lymphatic is the network, provides this network, the base foundation for uh, immune system. So your lymphatic capillaries, one cell, six layers of endothelial cells. Um, they have um, uh, flaps or um, valves and it transport fluids and lipid soluble substances such as lipid soluble vitamins, for example. Um, so you can see here, um, I like this diagram because it show you uh, we have arteriole, right? And we have venule. So that's a part of your cardiovascular system. And then you have capillary beds. And capillaries um, are you know, pretty permeable. So you have some fluids that leaking out um, and then fluids um, reabsorbed back into capillaries, back to your venous blood. But extra fluid uh, will be picked up by lymphatic capillaries. And this yellow stuff are your cells. Right, so lymphatic capillaries work 
um, with the uh, uh, your blood capillaries to return fluids, uh, extra fluids from your tissue back to your uh, heart and back to your bloodstream. Mm, so lymphatic vessels, um, so that we talk about lymphatic capillaries. Now, um, then we have um, lymphatic trunks and lymphatic ducts. So lymphatic vessels are similar to veins in structure, contains valve. Lymphatic trunks um, are formed when smaller lymphatic capillaries um, unite together. So lymph vessels merge, making lymphatic trunks. And then they make uh, bigger vessels, lymphatic ducts. Um, we have a uh, right lymphatic duct and thoracic duct. Um, and those ducts bring lymph uh, back to your venous circulation. So you, hear, you see here uh, the subclavian vein and internal jugular vein. And this is where our right lymphatic duct uh, connects to your vein. And over here on the left side, we have um, the um, thoracic duct also connects to the subclavian vein right uh, at the point where subclavian merges with the internal jugular. And it's interesting that the um, right lymphatic duct um, just drain a very smaller part of your body compared to the thoracic duct. So thoracic duct, for example, drains all this lymph and fluids from your uh, legs, right, from low extremities, when the um, right lymphatic duct, only from the, um, uh, pretty much the thorax and the right upper limb and the right part of the head. Uh, um, another function of the lymphatic system is the immune response. Uh, it's a barrier defense, uh, or, in a, or I'm sorry, in an immune response, you have your barrier defense like skin, mucous, membrane. Um, then you have specific and non-specific uh, response. Um, uh, and specific includes your adaptive immunity and non-specific is innate. And um, so you have um, many different cells that are part of your immune response. And they also found within lymphatic organs. And some of them even uh, mature and develop within lymphatic organs, right? So we, we will not go over um, this um, uh, diagram into detail, just telling you pretty much, uh, I would say over here, let's just look at the last um, part of this diagram. So you will have B cells and T cells those are cells that part of your adaptive immune system, or you have your monocytes, eosinophils, neutrophils, basophils that are part of your um, innate immune response. Uh, and why all of a sudden uh, covering lymphatic system, we're talking about immune system, because immune system, uh, it's a physiological system, really. It's not anatomical that much. Um, but lymphatic system, that's, that's an uh, anatomical part of your immune system, right? So immune system will include your uh, lymphatic system, right? Organs of your lymphatic system plus, plus your white blood cells. Okay. Um, so here um, we just go to BT lymphocytes, plasma cells, natural killer cells that are really over here, natural killer cells, uh, B cells, T cells, and plasma cells. Um, so B lymphocytes um, create um, diverse antibodies, T lymphocytes secrete chemical messengers, plasma cells secrete antibodies, and um, natural killer cells destroyed virally infected cells. Those are um, all different lymphocytes. Um, lymphocytes development, um, they developed uh, within the red bone marrow first, B and T cells production happened there, and B cells maturation happened within red blood marrow. Uh, T cells, however, uh, from your red bone marrow migrating into the thymus, that is a gland on the top of the heart, 
and this is where they mature. Um, now, secondary lymphoid organs include a um, side of um, naive uh, lymphocytes, and naive lymphocytes means those lymphocytes that they kind of they 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 were not differentiated yet to a, to attack a specific pathogen. So we'll include your spleen, lymphoid nodules, and lymph nodes. Uh, and lymph nodes, um, so lymph nodes, uh, lymph nodes shown over here, um, has kind of like important function in your um, uh, as a part of your lymphatic systems and um, the, another function as a part of your immune system. So for example, it removes debris and pathogen from your lymph. It contains dendritic cells, macrophages, they're part of your immune response, T and B cells. So you can see remove, removal of pathogens um, containing of these white blood cells, T, B cells, dendritic macrophages. This is mostly part of the uh, immune system, but uh, uh, removal of debris and returning of kind of cleaning the lymph, cleansing the lymph, and that might be a part of your um, lymphatic system. Now, spleen uh, is a part of the lymphatic system, is the biggest organ of lymphatic system, filter of the blood. Um, it has very extensive vascularization, so lots of blood vessels. Also contains macrophages and dendritic cells. Again, those are white uh, blood cells, a part of your immune system, immune response. And the spleen um, uh, is made of red and white pulp. That's what we call it. So red pulp will have lots of the venules and um, the white pulp will have lots of um, these macrophages and dendritic cells. Um, so um, also we have dense clusters of lymphocytes uh, found in the tonsils, uh, malt and vault. Uh, malt and vault, um, um, uh, that's um, lymphatic tissue that is accumulated uh, in your digestive tract and your respiratory tract. Uh, tonsils, um, um, so tonsils are also the clusters of lymphocytes uh, that surrounding your uh, uh, surrounding your nasal cavity and found also uh, within your uh, oral cavity. And what all these structures, tonsils, malt, and bald, um, do? Because they have um, high concentration of lymphocytes, it traps and destroys and removes um, different pathogens, bacteria, viruses, uh, or, mm, some debris, um, they, and prevent them from entering your body, entering your bloodstream, um, right, and so on. So, for example, if you see your tonsils that um, located uh, at the opening of your um, um, aura pharynx, right? So whenever you eat food, whenever you uh, you have some you know, air coming uh, from your nasal cavity towards your larynx, um, all this air or food may have different pathogens and you have this accumulation of white blood cells that will help you to um, you know, uh, neutralize them or get rid of them, destroy them. So here are kind of like more about this malt and malt. So malt is mucosa-associated lymphoid tissue. Uh, and where you find your mucosa in your um, uh, digestive tract, in your urogenital tract. So those are lymphoid follicles in the mucous membrane, epithelial, GI tract, uh, breast tissue, lungs, um, eyes, pears, patches, that's also in your uh, small intestine, right? Or a bronchus-associated lymphoid tissue, those are lymphoid follicular structure in bronchi affected against inhaled pathogens and mucosa-associated lymphoid tissue active against the um, 
pathogens that can be found in your food, right? For example, or in water, something goes through, through your digestive tract. Okay, um, and that's pretty much it, right? So let's uh, like very quick recap. And I do understand this is um, just, just quick introduction. Um, but the point is that your lymphatic system includes um, um, your uh, lymphatic vessels. That's the major function of this lymphatic vessels to return extra fluid that leaked out from your um, blood capillaries into your tissues. So pick up those fluid, uh, carry this fluid through your lymph nodes, clean those fluids and return them back to your cardiovascular circulation. And a huge part of lymphatic system is your immune system, such as uh, all these white blood cells shown over here, right? And how they, um, they originate in the red bone marrow, and then they migrate into um, either stay in your bone marrow and mature or migrate in the thymus and mature. Um, and then we have the whole um, aggregation of white blood cells um, within. Uh, your uh, spleen, uh, within uh, tonsils, uh, in the uh, mucous membrane of your digestive tract, respiratory tract, um, in, in breast, in uh, uh, lungs, in the eyes. So that's um, lymphatic tissue, or I'm sorry, lymphatic, um, lymphoid tissue that is part of the lymphatic system uh, protects your body from pathogens invading it, right? So that was, again, very quick introduction to the endocrine system and lymphatic system. Uh, there is no way it can, it, it covers uh, a lot. It just because of the limited time in our class, uh, I just pretty much want to tell you, those systems exist. Um, they do their important role in keeping your body into homeostasis. And here are the major organs for those systems. So uh, thank you for watching. And um, I hope it was helpful.